Welcome back to Manly Focus Channel where we give you the no-nonsense truth about life, relationships, and the challenges that modern men face. If you haven't already, make sure you smash that subscribe button and ring the bell so you won't miss out on any of our impactful content. Now, sit tight because today we have a critical topic that every man needs to understand. We're diving deep into the shocking epidemic of mental health issues among modern women, particularly young, white liberal women. Whether you're dating, in a relationship, or just trying to understand the socio-political landscape, this is a topic you can't afford to ignore. Let's get into it. Among the myriad of challenges facing men in the modern world, the one we're about to discuss has gained growing traction but little nuanced examination, the skyrocketing rates of mental health issues among young, liberal women. According to a 2020 survey, 56.3% of white liberal women under the age of 30 have been officially diagnosed with mental health conditions. That's more than half, gentlemen. Now, what's the deal? Is this surge in mental health issues genuine or manipulated for political convenience? And perhaps most critically for men looking to navigate relationships and society as a whole, what does this epidemic mean for you? Statistics don't lie, but they can be interpreted in various ways. A 2020 survey ignited conversations when it revealed that 56.3% of white liberal women under the age of 30 have a diagnosed mental health condition. That's a mind-boggling number, not least because it begs a host of questions. While mental health is a broad issue affecting people across the political and demographic spectrum, why is this particular group so disproportionately represented? The statistics are hard to ignore, and one must question whether this rise in mental health diagnoses, particularly among young liberal women, is a reflection of genuine mental health challenges or perhaps other socio-political factors. The last few decades have seen an immense growth in feminist ideologies. The doctrine, which started as a genuine push for equality, has evolved into something much more dogmatic. It posits that women don't need men and should strive for complete independence. Now, there's nothing wrong with promoting self-reliance, however, when this message starts to make women disregard their own biological inclinations, like the desire for a family, it creates a ticking time bomb. Women who spend years focusing only on their careers often reach a stage where they suddenly realize the biological clock has been ticking all along. And when it dawns upon them, the desperation to find a partner, any partner, can lead to hasty decisions that contribute to mental stress and, you guessed it, more mental health diagnoses. Here's where the narrative gets even more twisted. The modern feminist doctrine often equates traditional femininity with weakness, advocating for women to adopt more masculine traits. Ironically, this has led to a situation where women who have been conditioned to forsake their innate feminine qualities find themselves struggling to attract partners who are looking for just that, femininity. Men are instinctively attracted to feminine qualities, no matter how much social conditioning tries to negate this. When women suppress these traits, thinking that doing so makes them strong, they create a self-imposed barrier to forming healthy relationships. This situation is not only mentally exhausting for women but also creates a complicated, frustrating landscape for men looking for compatible partners. It's not just the young ones, women over 40 are also increasingly diagnosed with mental health conditions, particularly depression. Today, one in four women is on some form of antidepressant medication. This leads us to a very pertinent question, are we as a society medicalizing normal ranges of human emotions and experiences for commercial benefit? The pharmaceutical industry has a lot to gain from a heavily medicated population. Is this explosion of mental health diagnoses and medication usage reflective of a genuine health crisis, or is it a consequence of a society quick to medicate its problems away? Diving into the political angle. It's remarkable to see that conservatives generally show fewer mental health diagnoses compared to their liberal counterparts. The most disproportionately affected group is white liberal women. This difference begs several questions. Does political ideology shape mental health, or is it perhaps the other way around? Could it be that the political stance you take has a direct impact on your mental well-being, or is it that those with certain mental health conditions are more inclined to adopt a liberal viewpoint? Many white liberals have a tendency to externalize societal issues, often viewing themselves or other groups as oppressed victims. While oppression and discrimination are very real issues, the problem with this mentality is that it removes personal responsibility from the equation. When everything wrong in your life is someone else's fault, you relinquish control, and when you have no control, you are rendered powerless. 
this feeling of powerlessness is not conducive to good mental health. Thus, this externalizing mindset may contribute to the mental health issues we see in the statistics. Given all these different perspectives, one has to wonder if this surge in mental health diagnoses is real or manufactured. Are these high rates of mental health issues among liberal women an accurate reflection of emotional suffering, or are they part of a broader agenda? Could it be that some individuals find benefit in adopting the role of a mental health sufferer for social or political capital? Is the victim mentality being weaponized to serve a different narrative entirely? In the era of instant gratification and social media validation, the concept of resilience has almost become antiquated. Yet, resilience, mental toughness, and self-reliance are virtues that have stood the test of time for a reason. Instead of promoting a culture of perpetual victimhood, we should be cultivating these virtues. Acknowledging that life is hard, that discrimination exists, and that inequalities are real should not preclude us from fostering a strong sense of self, capable of overcoming obstacles. We find ourselves at a critical juncture, with societal norms teetering on the edge. On one side, there are genuine issues that require attention, inequality, victimization, and discrimination do exist. On the other hand, the constant focus on these issues to the exclusion of personal responsibility is creating a culture of entitlement and perpetual victimhood. Striking a balance between these extremes is vital for a well-functioning society and for fostering healthy relationships between men and women. All right, guys, that's a wrap for today's deep dive. This is a subject that's complicated, controversial, but ultimately, something we all need to be talking about. Whether you agree or disagree, the facts and figures reveal a concerning trend, one that directly and indirectly affects us men. Remember, understanding these dynamics isn't just for intellectual debates, it's practical knowledge that could save you a lot of stress and heartache down the line. If you found this video insightful, do me a favor, hit that like button and share it with someone who needs to see it. We need more men to be aware of these issues so we can navigate the challenges that come with relationships and societal expectations in today's world. Your engagement helps us keep creating high-quality content focused on empowering men. And hey, if you have any thoughts or personal experiences related to today's topic, drop them in the comments below. I read all of them and often get inspired for future videos based on what you guys are saying. As always, thanks for spending your time with us here at Manly Focus. Until next time, stay strong, stay focused, and keep questioning the narrative.